Hi, this is Stephanie Cook, and um, I did read the New King James Version of the Book of Daniel, chapters 1 through 8. I've also been focused on a Daniel Bible study that Beth Moore put together in 2006, so I thought that was very interesting. Um, this focused on Daniel's integrity, and integrity is honesty and living out your moral values. Um, we lose our identity and integrity without resolve. That's something that Beth Moore quoted in that Bible study for 2006. Um, King Nebuchadnezzar besieged Jerusalem and took captive young, good-looking, strong, wise um, men who had the ability to learn the Babylonian language and literature and put them through a three-year training program um, before they were able to serve the king. In that, he gave provisions that were essentially coming from his table and providing them the best food and drink or wine um, in his palace and kingdom. And um, after um, that was offered, Daniel spoke to the chief Enoch and he said, um, purposed in his heart, that he would not defile himself with the portions of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the Enochs that he might not defile himself. And that was Daniel 1 8. And that spoke to me because Daniel could not obey the Enoch's request and drink or eat what was provided because. That was specifically forbidden according to Jewish law and God's command. Um, and Daniel was going to have integrity and personal integrity to hold true to that versus complying with King Nebuchadnezzar's request. In the end, the Enoch let Daniel um, test for a couple of weeks, you know, his resolve with God and only eating vegetables and fruits and drinking water. And his strength not only maintained, but it actually got better and increased because he had favor with God and he was obedient to what God had commanded. As I progressed in my studies, I found harmony with this passage in Daniel um, with my personal beliefs related to the ACA Code of Ethics 2014 standard um, E.5, specifically on cultural sensitivity. Um, Daniel brought this to the forefront of my mind, um, that culture, culturally we have a lot of different values and beliefs and those need to be considered through the counseling process to be more effective in considering mental health solutions that are appropriate to that culture. Um, it, it, you know, it may not be what you specifically originally thought you, you know, would pursue in resolution, but if you do not consider the cultural implications and un you may unintentionally hurt the client or harm the client um, that you represent through a diagnosis or a treatment that would be offensive to their culture. Um, personally, I want to be respectful of one's culture and beliefs and be aware and conscientious of how to do that in practice, just as I would want someone to do the same for me. Um, you know, if I was seeing a counselor, I would expect the same treatment. Um, both personal in integrities are maintained that way. Um, on the other hand, one counseling professional value in the Code of Ethics from the ACA Code of Ethics 2014 standards that I still remain in conflict with due to my personal religious beliefs is standard B.2.B. Dot regarding confidentiality, regarding end-of-life decisions. It's not the confidentiality that conflicts me. It's the end-of-life decision where, as counselors, we are asked to assist those pursuing death with dignity. I remember reading a story about Brittany Maynard, who was a 30-year-old terminal cancer patient who chose to die with dignity on her time frame. Um, she did not want her family or herself to experience the trauma or put her family through the burden and that she would face. I had a great compassion for her decision and know that it was not an easy one for her or for her family to accept. 
the human side of me can easily relate. However, my personal religious conflict in this area is that to me, God is in control of life and death decisions. And even with terminal cancer, I believe as a Christian, we shine a light that may lead others to Christ, even in our darkest hour. Um, to know that the end of life, you know, helped give someone eternal life, you know, means that my suffering helped in their salvation. In Luke 22, 42, Jesus stated, Father, if you are willing to take this cup for me, yet not my will, but your will be done. Jesus respected the will of his father, knowing what we, he would have to endure for our salvation. And it is the greatest gift ever received. And like this gift, I believe as a counselor, it is our gift in honoring our clients by helping through them through these difficult scenarios and helping them find the best deal, way to deal with them. Um, it's a special time in their lives with their loved ones. And that was um, something that I read from Ungarino and Sandberg 2008. Um, thank you for your time today.